Started in church this morning. Good to see everybody out and visiting today. A little cool in the Ozarks. Is the fish still, can you fish slow down so you can hit them? <laughs> They're still fast, are they? It's, it's good to see everybody out today, and I mean that. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> frost on the pumpkin, I don't know. The old, the old saying is if you don't like the weather in the Ozarks, stick around, it'll change. Just been doing that, hasn't it? And, uh, but anyway, let's stand together. Brother Dick Glenn's going to come. And, are you coming and leading us singing today? All right, let's stand together. What page are we singing? 537 today, number 537. Let's get in and sing the Lord. And let's just set our hearts and set our minds toward the throne of grace today in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, get him come right ahead. <clears throat> Figured on this cloudy, cool Sunday morning, we need a song to wake us up this morning. All right, so number 537. Jesus saves. You sing it out this morning, all right? On that first stanza. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Find the seeds and cross the waves. On your knees our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let's see here, brother Josiah back there. Would you pray this morning, it's particularly that the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, would fall upon this place this morning, and that we, it would be all for His glory today before we dismiss to our classes. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we can come and hear Your Word. Lord, I do pray that Your sweet Spirit would be upon us. Lord, I pray that You, you would Pastor Ed, preach us, does the Sunday school. I pray that You'd be with each teacher, and pray that You'd just be honored and glorified. Amen. Remember, teens, you have to stay up here for now, all right? All right, let's take our Bibles to Romans chapter 12 this morning. And uh, Slade or somebody back there, do we have any uh, uh, Romans booklets? If you don't have a Romans booklet, we'll see, first of all, how many we got. And uh, But if you happen to have brought that, we're in the, on the lesson... Uh, 17 on Romans chapter 12. Lesson 17 of Romans chapter 12. And uh, we're going to bust things wide open today. I hope we can aggravate the devil. Amen. Amen. I hope we can aggravate the devil. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. I'm a sorry and low down. I, 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 the only, you know, I don't have any idea where that thing's at, boys. Is it over in my seat? Where do you go? died for me on that cross and shed his blood and was the perfect sinless sacrifice for a sinner like me. I said the worst verse I have trouble with in the Bible is when Paul said I'm chief of sinners. I tend to disagree with him. <laughs> I think I am. Amen. But I'll tell you something now. We're in an exciting chapter here. Now, you know, if you're looking there at your, uh, at your lesson on Romans chapter 12, it says this, after doctrine comes duty. After revelation comes responsibility. And after principle comes practice. 
And what's happening here in Romans chapter 12 is God's given us doctrine all the way through here concerning the pagans, you know, the Hebrews, the whole nine yards. And now he says in chapter 12, start putting it into practice. A faith that isn't put in practice is worthless. Maybe worse than worthless. Amen. <laughs> Guy said, well, I don't go to church because just a bunch of hypocrites up there. I quit going out there. They, they wasn't getting along. And he's got some of them back. Anybody need one? Just raise your hand and he'll, he'll come to you. If you don't have one, need one. And so the old boy asked him, he said, so you don't go to church because they're a bunch of hypocrites. Said, yeah, that's right. He said, well, do you go to work anywhere? Yeah, I go to work here. He says, any hypocrites up here where you work? You get along with everybody where you work? Have you quit work? He said, no, I don't get along with everybody. There any hypocrites up there? People ain't what they claim to be. Oh, yeah. Well, have you quit work? Well, no. He said, do you win every ball game you go to? Does the referee call every call right? Well, no. We still go to the ball game, don't you? You leave a ball game matter in the hornet, you'll go back the next one. You'll say them referees a bunch of cheats. They bought them off and all kinds of stuff. But you go back. But somebody does a little bit of something at church and whoo. So you know where all that comes from. Amen? Amen. You know where all that comes from. Anyway, we need to put it in practice. And boy, I tell you, there's so much practical good. In Romans chapter 12, Lord, help us today to feed the flock of God. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I beseech you, therefore. Now, he's saying, therefore, from the previous 11 chapters of all that God talked about there, he said, therefore, because of all this doctrine, because of what Christ did for us, what Christ is doing through us, what the Holy Spirit's doing through us, he said, brethren, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. You know, if you're going to serve God, it's going to be by his mercy. Amen. Amen. We're saved by his mercy. I'll tell you what, kept by his mercy every day. I just want to live under mercy spout. Amen. Amen. That's where I want to stay at because I just need God's mercy. That you do something, you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's a powerful statement. Now, I want to ask us today, have you done that? Have you presented your body? Now, there's two things you want to hit here today. He mentions in these verses, body and your mind. A lot of people tend to think that your salvation, your, 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 your uh, Christianity is all about just spiritual. It's about your whole being. Now, God births you. When you get saved, you're born of the Spirit. That's where God, first of all, you're born of the Spirit. Then God begins to deal with your soul, and he expects your body to reflect what's in your spirit, and by the way, it does. And this is why I love Christianity, I love the Bible, because it is real. It's not some kind of imaginary facade, religious jumbo. He's saying what's going on in here is a reflection, will be reflected out here. Now, he says there, uh, a living sacrifice. God, you know, it's fine, I guess, to die for the faith, but God says he wants you to live. A living sacrifice. But it's a living sacrifice. So in other words, what, what does it mean to sacrifice? Maybe what you were going to do in life, you won't do because of what God has called you to. Maybe what you could have done in life, but you won't because it might violate what God would, would want of you. Uh, the Bible said, he that saveth his life shall lose it. He that loseth his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, the same shall save it. A missionary said that was killed in, in, uh, down in Central America. He is no fool who trades that which he cannot lose, which he cannot keep for that which he cannot lose. And that means to sacrifice some things. And by the way, in, his, in what God wants to do is present ourselves to him. It may, we may have to sacrifice friends. We may have to sacrifice family. We may have to sacrifice income. We may have to sacrifice pleasure. We may have to sacrifice a lot of things. But God says, I want you to present. Now, here's, this is very important to me. I love this. He didn't say, I'm going to force you. I want you to present it. I want to tell you something. The devil will force you. He'll make you think it's what you need and what you want, but it ain't. But Jesus says, present it. Present yourself. Volunteer. Present your body. A living set. Now, here's what he said. Now, think about this. He didn't say present your spirit here. He didn't say present your soul. He said present your body. What is your body? There's that song. 
Uh, my hands were made to help my neighbor. My tongue, it's got all those body parts. Your feet, your hands, your tongue, your ears, your eyes, your countenance. The strength that you have. You know, I'm going to say something to this church, and I'm not trying to pat anybody's neck. God knows all about it. But I'm going to tell you what makes this place go. There is a bunch of people who do physical things with their body every week working to make everything go on here. People who don't have to be bragged on and patted on the back and all that kind of junk. They just get in and they want it to go. And I'll tell you something, things don't happen without somebody putting their body into it. Amen? Put your body into it. And God says you present your body, your voice. You see, to, to preach, uh, to preach, you're, you're presenting your body. You're, you, you have a tongue, you have a mind, you have a heart. You have a mouth, you know, to fix a meal for somebody, to cook cookies or take a meal to somebody or to go help somebody that's elderly or, or sick. Or if it, it takes, your body has got to get involved. But also there's this whole thing about what, you know, there's a lot about presenting your body a living sacrifice to the Lord. And this is so important in the day and age in which we live, of all our fads and fashions, we're going to get into this. He said, you present it, a living sacrifice, holy. Now, that does not necessarily mean sinless. I, I, certainly, we ought to try to live right. But I'll be honest with you, the older I get, the worse I am. I'm the point, I told my mother this morning, if I'm not saved by grace, I'm shot. I don't have a whisper of a hope. But I am saved by grace. He said, holy, but that word there, it, 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 its emphasis is separated unto God. Separated unto God. Identified with God. Pleasing to God. Obedient to God. An attitude of holiness. That sep I don't belong to this world, I belong to him. Amen. Okay? Acceptable unto God. This is what God asked us to do. Because, therefore, because of, of the salvation that he gave us through Christ, because of this truth, this wondrous gospel, he says, I want you to present your body living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at a lot of things. Acceptable unto God. Not, not to this world. I don't care if this world accepts me or not. I really don't even want their acceptance. I really don't even want their approval. I've got past that several years ago. I'm not looking for this world's approval nor this world's acceptance. By the way, the world didn't accept Jesus Christ either. Amen? And Jesus literally said, marvel not if the world hates you. Because we're going to be looking at world compared to the things here. <clears throat> Which is your reasonable service. This is not out of bounds. This is not beyond. I'll tell you, he died for me. He loved me. He died for me. I'm not going to hell because the only way that I'm not going to suffer eternal punishment from a holy God is because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. Amen. A free gift. All he asked me to do is reasonable. I, I would think that'd be reasonable. It's, not, it's reasonable. It's good for me. It's wonderful. It's the only thing that matters. It's not unreasonable. You know, that's what gets me about it. I'm going to tell you right now. It, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. I get tired. <clears throat> but when I pre hear a preacher say, well, I got to preach Sunday. <laughs> boy, I mean, I'm like, oh, really? Why don't you say I get to preach Sunday? Amen. Okay? I mean, that's just, I'm honest with you. Uh, now, verse 2 is where this is going to, we're coming at this morning. And be not conformed. There's the big word there, conformed to this world. But be you transformed. There's two words, conformed and transformed. And here's how we're transformed, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And people want to know the will of God. You better get this verse if you ever want to know the will of God about your life. So we're going to look at several things here this morning. And uh, we're going to talk about being conformed. And I'm going to use a notebook here, just some things that I got down. But... Uh, I want you to participate now. Let's, let's look at this. In Romans chapter 12, conformed or transformed. Now, I put on a post. I, I was sitting there meditating on a chef's day, and then my wife, uh, once in a while, make blueberry muffins. And she had a couple little muffin pans there, and I got loaned to muffin pans, and I got thinking, that's exactly a picture of life. Because she takes that and she pours it in there and it molds. And I got to think about all the different molds that there are in this world. There's lots of, a lot of stuff is made by mold and it's poured in and it's molded. 
And the, this is what, when we're talking about being conformed or transformed, no, in, in, I, I was, uh, I, I come to uh, age kind of during the hippie time. How many members of the hippie days? How many don't remember the hippie days? God bless you. <laughs> you, you thank God that you didn't ra- raise in the hippie days. Now I'm going to tell you what, I'm not, not, everybody's going around with bell bottoms on, clothes, everybody's walking around with peace, brother, and ponytail, and a peace sign everywhere, and a Volkswagen, <laughs> Volkswagen van with flowers painted all over it. And here's what, this is what blows they always said this, man, that just blows my mind. That's why I say that, because I grew up in that time, all right? But here's the stupidest thing. One day I was about 21, and this hit me. They said, hey, man, I do my own thing. And none of them were. They all wore the same britches, <laughs> the same shirts, Said the same, you know what they all, they were, they were so unique and different, they all said, wow, man. <laughs> then they got to all saying, groovy, man. It, the, the biggest lie that was ever perpetrated is that we're all doing our own thing. We're all smoking the same weed. Nobody was doing their own thing. You're not doing your own thing either. And I'm not doing my own thing. And this is something you want to get a hold of. There's not a person listening to me or in this building. There's not a person on the face of this earth that is doing their own thing. You, are, you, there's two masters in this world, Satan and God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're either conforming to one of them or being transformed by the other. And this is so big because what pukes me out, makes me want to vomit in American Christianity is everybody's going to church and everybody's worshiping God and go right back out of the church house and conforms to this world. Yeah. And even now they brought it into the church house yeah. and the church is supposed to conform to the world yeah. 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 in every arena. Doesn't make any difference. Whether it's... All right. So God says, be not conformed to this world. Now Hebrews I'm going to give you a few verses here. Hebrews 12, one of this says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Don't ever forget that verse. See, what you're looking at and who you admire and whose acceptance you want and whose approval you want is who you will be conformed to. And the Bible said, looking unto Jesus. Now, when we're talking about being transformed by the renewing of your mind, now watch this. It said, present your body and renew your mind. <clears throat> what does it mean to present your body? Lord, I'm going to present, I want to ask you right now, and I want to ask you to do this while this Sunday school lesson is going on. And I ask you this first question, have you ever presented your body? Your body does not belong to you. That's right. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit if you're saved. Amen. God has creative rights to you and redemptive rights to you. And we are not our own. We've been purchased. Now, he said to present. Brother John, when I married Karen, I presented myself to her. And when nobody grabbed me by the nap of the neck and said, you got to marry this girl. And I, did, I wouldn't have wanted her to marry me with somebody saying, now, Karen, you got to marry him. And her not want to. We presented ourselves to each other. Present, present. W- willingly, gladly. Okay? This is, the way, this is what God asked us. The church, the bride of Christ, he presented himself to us and for us. And he asked us to present ourselves to him. This is why Christianity is about love. It's not about rules. <clears throat> okay? But love, <clears throat> rules, laws, and regulations are involved in love. <clears throat> For instance, I presented myself to Karen. Is it unreasonable for me to say I should be faithful to her? Not if I love her. So I ask you this. Have you presented your body a living sacrifice to Jesus Christ? 
So what would that imply? What would that incur? What does that mean? How does that work itself out in practical Christianity? How does it do it? Tell me. I want to ask you a question. And don't just stay tied in your saddle. Keep your feet in the stirrups. Tighten your seat belt up just a little bit. <clears throat> would, Jesus, would Jesus or did Jesus or would he have ever violated the word of God in any slight way? If he had, he'd have been a sinner and he couldn't couldn't be the Savior. Would Jesus, if he was here now, put a nose ring in his nose? How, why? How do you know that? Bible, Bible strictly warns against doing that. That's pagan practice. Would Jesus have had a tattoo? Why not? You say, Reggie, you're judging. Well, why don't you tell Jesus that? He's the one who set the rules. Why don't you just look up to heaven right now and say, you're judging me. You're right. He's going to judge you, and he is judging you. Now. He's judging me. And I'm glad. Why, why don't I have a problem with him judging me? Why do you have a problem with it? I want him to, because his ways are right. They're holy. They're right. And if I love him, what, what, and he's the head of the church, who's the boss, me or Jesus? Who's the one who sets, says the way things are going to be around the house? Jesus. You know, so you know what? The trouble is, this is why our culture is like it is right now, because we've got this rebellious spirit that Jesus has got to conform to us instead of us conforming to him. Amen. And that ain't going to work. And I promise you something. Heaven's not going to be full of people who bucked against God all the way through life. Amen. I'm just being honest with you. So what does it mean for you and I to conform? Dean. I butt heads a lot with... Uh... Yeah. Young people, more than, than others, but that go to church, say they're saved, everything, but God's Word has no hold on them. They do what they want to do. They don't care what it says. Yeah. They don't go to it for counsel. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to go do something, I'll go see what God wants me to do first. Okay. Ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. This is what Romans is all about at this point. He has taken us from the, uh, the uh, showing us what sin is and how everyone is, all have sinned, come short of the glory of God, how Jesus died for us, the whole thing, uh, 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 perpetuation, uh, justification, reconciliation, all the way through what Jesus, much more now being justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath. And then he gets to chapter 12 and says, therefore, because of what he did for you and because of who you are in Christ, now, don't you let this world conform you to its image. Amen. And I'm just going to be honest with you. This is the issue that the Holy Spirit used to reveal to me I was a lost man. Okay? Better get this. Because you see, in your spirit or your heart, you know that inconsistencies, you know, they're, they're messed up, brother. You were talking about the tattoos. There used to be a time when I was the same way. I'd get up. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear it from my pastor. I didn't want to hear it from you. But I had a rebellious spirit. I left. I went to the world. I've got tattoos everywhere. Hey, listen. I've got listen. tattoos everywhere on my. Listen to it. Everywhere on my body. Not on my legs, but I'm filled up because I was in a rebellious state. Sure. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear the rules from home, from God. But God showed me my error. I didn't keep going and getting tattoos. I even wear my shirt to show them sometimes so I can minister to young people to tell you, if you want the devil, he'll take you down a road you won't believe. That's right. And it is against God. And I came to a point when I looked in the mirror and I looked at how I did my body in a pagan type thing. And the devil <laughs> wanted me to live in that. But God let me know he saved me from it. So if you've done it, know that God can forgive you. But don't go back to it. Amen. Walk away from it. Be a minister. Minister another kid or another person that might want that role. That's what I do for kids. Because I did it. And you can't take it back. That's exactly it. And here's the secret right there. Is you better come to a point where you understand that God, Jesus' blood. Okay, can I be honest with you? I, I really don't care if you got tattoos too much. I, I don't even think about it. You know what? But you know what I do care about? What's your attitude about it? That's what I care about. 
See, and if you listen to him right there, it's, it's not that we've all sinned and come short of God. I ain't going to be as honest as you were right now about some sins that people can't see. I might be able to see your tattoo, but you can't see my heart, how wicked it is. Okay, but the, the deal is, is what are we willing to be transformed to from that? Now, the reason I said that is because that's a very visible thing that you can see on your body. That's one reason I mentioned it. Start thinking in terms of what am I doing with my body? I mean, if I put a bone through my nose, I put a big deal through my ear, or, uh, 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 you know, I'll just be honest with you, a, you know, a ring through my belly button and wear a shirt up like this. What am I trying to tell people? What am I doing? I mean, what? My body. But another thing, how about fornication? What are you doing with your body? What about adultery? What are you doing with your body? What about pornography? What are you doing with your body? I'm going to be honest with you. I see all these selfies and they're in the mirror in the bathroom and they've got, you know, hardly, you know I mean, these pops up, you know. What, what are you trying to tell people? What are you honestly trying to tell people? Yeah, yeah, I don't want no selfie of me in the bathroom. Woo! Mercy sakes alive, amen. Thank you, brother. I needed that. All right, now, he said, there, and let's get something down right now. This is not about sanctimonious, pious, superior, holier now Christianity. The Bible just says that we're to present our body a living sacrifice unto him. It's reasonable. It's nothing. Holy. You know, it's not being about sanctimonious. Well, I don't have a tattoo and I don't have a nose ring. Right. Amen. But I want to ask you a question. If somebody says, you know what, I don't want to do that because of what the Bible teaches, what do you get mad at me for? Why do you get hot at me because I'm, I don't want to think that's right? Why do you have an attitude because I just want to obey the, some, some, some girls over here, some boys over here, and they just want to do right, and you're all huffy-puffy at them and, and call them holier than thou? They want to dress right, they want to dress modest, and you call them, and you, you snicker at them and snort at them and accuse them of being a Pharisee? Yes. Biggest lie perpetrated is the devil will tell people that we do these things because we think we're better than you, and it's exactly the opposite. Exactly. Amen. It's exactly the opposite. Now, uh, get, okay. granted, granted, Jesus dealt with all that. There is Phariseeism. There is cloaking and all that kind of junk, and you know, it's the heart rotten, but outwardly, you know, outwardly making show. There, there is that. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't try to teach that at this church. and never have, to my knowledge. It's just if the Bible says something, why don't we just obey it? Why don't we just do it? Yes. Well, you were talking about the children, and I, we try to tell our kids, I mean, it goes along with don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Right. What you said, you know, if people come along like, well, why don't you have a tattoo, and why don't you look like us? Well, then that makes them feel some sort of way, and they don't want to be. You know, follow Christ. Yeah. And, and okay, here's the, here we are. Here we are. You got this young person. And buddy, I, I, whether you young people believe this or not, I was 13 at one time. <laughs> Me and you just broke fellowship. I'll just do that. <laughs> No, that's right. Amen. Long time ago, but it didn't take very long to get here. But, okay, uh, I can remember when Bell Bottoms was in. All right. Here's the real question right now that you need to ask yourself this. <clears throat> Who am I conforming to? And as I said, this was a big, huge issue with me. All right, the Beatles came. 1964. First place they was ever at was on Ed Sullivan, which was on Sunday night, along with Walt Disney. And if you have the good program, Bonanza, Walt Disney, Ed Sullivan on Sunday night, so you can stay on Sunday night. Well, guess where we're at 50 years later? Churches ain't having church on Sunday night. Right. Why ain't they having church on Sunday night? Because nobody come. Yeah. All right. But, what, but so what did I do? Now watch this. The world wanted, wants you to conform to you, and they're not joking about it either. They mean business with you. They're not tinkering with you, and Satan will deceive you, and he'll think, well, this is just okay, there's nothing wrong. But he's wanting to gradually, gradually shift you and move you to conform to him. So what did Reg Kelly do? The Beatles come in, and uh, 1964, <clears throat> and guys started growing their hair long. Yeah. 
And my dad, my dad, you know what he said? As long as you're in this house, you ain't growing your hair long. Right. And he'd set you down in front of mom with them dull. I think some of them had teeth out of them. them you know. <laughs> and you're a 13, 14, 15, 16-year-old boy. You know what you want to do? Hey, listen to me. You want to look sharp for the girls. Don't you lie to me. You want, did you want her to think you was good looking? You're not sure about it. Kind of, huh? You didn't really care. Amen. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but I wanted them girls to think I was good looking. Amen. And so my dad said, well, quick as I got away from home, what did I do? There I went. Now, what was I doing? Can anybody tell me what I was doing? I was conforming to the Beatles. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Is the Beatles of Christ or are they of the world? The world. And then, and then came along the bell bottoms. And then, and, then they said, now, and then they said, now you're supposed to wear platform shoes. <laughs> and I just, yeah, whatever you tell me to wear, I'll wear. Well, how am I supposed to look today? Is my hair long enough to suit you? Will you accept me? Will you like me? If I do everything you tell me to do, look like you want me to look? All right, get serious. And you girls. Is, is, is my pants tight enough? Am I showing enough my rear end to suit you? You can laugh if you want to, but it's the truth. These poor girls, they're being, they're being, they're being horsewhipped, horsewhipped by the devil. That's right. yeah. You do what we tell you to do. You dress like we tell you to do. Yeah. You look exactly like, and by the way, it'll get worse. That's right. So now, girls, give yourself a butch haircut. I mean, it, 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 can I tell you something about this here? It puts you in bondage, and you will never satisfy them. Never be good enough to be accepted and approved, and next week they'll have a new fad for you. Right here is a big one. We'll put it in red. Watch this. Trendsetters. Who's your trendsetter? Who are the trendsetters in America? Who are the trendsetters? Who are, the, who are these people, who are these entities that tell you how to dress and how to look and how to think and how to talk? Wow, man. Groovy, man. Peace, man. Who are these people who tell you how to act and look? And this is what I knew I was in bondage. Because, I mean, maybe you're, maybe you're a good Christian. I hope you are. Maybe, maybe you're just real. You're your own man. No, you're not. Maybe you're not like me. But this is what, you know, I went to church. Okay, are you, I went to church every Sunday. But when I got out of church, it was not the church and the truth of the Bible and the gospel that was, I was being transformed to, to the image of Christ. I was just totally consumed by wanting the world's acceptance and approval. So I let them pour me into their mold. If I was to show you my wedding picture tonight, me and Karen, uh, June 25th, 1977, show you a wedding picture. Had hair down my shoulders. All I thought about was looking. Now I'm going to tell you something. Having a butch haircut don't make you spiritual. Being bald, Dean, does not make you spiritual. Okay. I'm, <laughs> would you mind telling us how it helps? <laughs> and it's, it's just not, by the way, get beyond, get beyond the, the junk. Get beyond being offended. 
Get beyond. Watch this back up and say, you know what? I'm just going to get honest with myself this morning. Why do I do what I do? Who is transforming me? Who is conforming me to whose image? And this is how I knew I was in bondage because if I saw on TV there was a new fad or there was a new way you're supposed to talk or a new... Let's look at the trendsetters. Who are the trendsetters? TV would be a trendsetter, right? Sports. Education. Social media. TV, sports, education. But I'm going to be honest with you. The church ought to be in the trend-setting business. We're not to be conformed to this world, and people ought to be able to look at us and say there's something different there. They're different than the world. The Bible even called them, what was it, uh, peculiar. Why would they be called peculiar? Because they weren't like the world. Now, I want to tell you something. <clears throat> Watch this. Some of the worst conformity going on is in religion. Now, hang on your hats. If you were raised in an Amish setting, you're expected to conform to the way they cut their hair, the way they drive, how they, how they run their life, the way they dress, what they can do, what they cannot do, entertain. They have a conformity. But that conformity, dear friend, is absent of the gospel, and I hate to tell you that. Yes, that's right. Amen. Muslims have a conformity. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a woman, in, you know what I can't get? I can't get the women libbers in America being so positive toward Islam. When they want you covered up. All they want you to be able to see your eyes. Christianity is the most liberating thing for a woman that ever was on the face of this earth. No other faith in the world tells a husband to love their wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. But uh, conformity. I just ask you this. And, I, you know, I don't know. I, I know I, my personality about ruins my message half the time. I'm just being honest. You get sarcastic, you lose your message if you ain't careful. And I have a tendency to get sarcastic against sin. And I, see, I'm awful bad. The world likes to mock us, and I'm awful bad to want to mock them back. Yeah. And, you know, that, that don't always work. <clears throat> this here will bring liberty. It'll bring life. Conform to Jesus Christ. I, you ought to ask yourself a question. Do I really want to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ? Do, is, that, is that a desire of my heart? Or is it just a really a surface joke? Is it just cheap talk on Sunday morning? Or do I really desire for the Holy Spirit and the Word of God? Now, watch this. It says renewed. In the spirit of your mind, okay, in your mind. This is where the battlefield's at. This is where the battlefield's at. This world, <clears throat> how do you get renewed in your mind? How, how, what happened? And I can't, sorry, I have to use my own life as an illustration a lot of times. How did I, what happened to me to, to come to a point of where I didn't really care what that bunch thought anymore of how I looked, dressed, talked, or acted? And I wanted to be transformed to Christ and to the Word of God. You cannot separate Christ from the Word of God. Right. Cannot. Okay? You can't separate them. One and the same. And <clears throat> we want to be biblically minded. So we start reading the Bible, and what does it do? It renews our mind. We start thinking differently than we used to think. <clears throat> Over here, we get back to this thing of the body. When I was conformed to the world, I wanted women to dress immodestly. 
so I could enjoy the pleasure of seeing them and fulfill the lust of my flesh. Are you listening to me? Girls aren't stupid. You think your daughter doesn't watch here in church all the time? I'm going to ask you women something today. I'm going to ask you to get an honest heart with yourself. I'm going to ask you to be real honest with yourself. Who, can, who, who caused you to dress like you dress? Who influenced you? Who are you truly conformed to? Guys, <clears throat> who influenced you to look and act like you act and to think like you think? Who influenced you? you got, I, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, between last night and this morning, the Holy Spirit just got on me so heavy about this. It's like Lord said, Reggie, now, now you're where it's really at. Now, now you're off the surface stuff. Now you're off the, the little religious junk. And I think Paul, right in here, the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, knew this is so critical. This is, this is what makes... <clears throat> There's a guy who's a street preacher. I see his deal every once in a while. And he's very... I mean, I tell you what, he, as far as I know, he's solid and bi biblical. And he was preaching, <clears throat> street preaching, and this woman kept trying to get his attention. And... Uh, I'm just going to tell it like it is. Uh, she's dressed in shorts. Uh, she had on a, a top that was very made made her body very prompt, you know, very prominent and emphasized. And she keeps bugging him that she wants to come up to the microphone and ask him a question. And she comes up there and says, "I'm saved. I'm a Christian. And what you're doing is destroying Christianity by preaching this judgmental preaching that you're preaching." And he said, "Well, how do you do it?" She said, "Well, I live my life in front of everybody." And I went, yeah. But what was really going on was she was convicted. That's what was really going on. And, and he didn't want to, but what I'm saying is, <clears throat> when, when we secretly, when, when we secretly or even blatantly, and by the way, young people, here's what will happen. First of all, you'll have a secret rebellion in your heart at your home, secretly first. You'll do, what, you'll do what mom and dad says to do and go where they said, but secretly you're inside, you're rebelling. But, and here's what has to happen. And you say, Reggie, what, what's, what makes this kind of thing happen? I don't know how to explain it any more than this, but when a person gets saved, the Holy Spirit of God has to do something in your heart that makes you want to present your body a living sacrifice. He will not coerce you. He will not force you. But he will do a work of love to the Lord. And by the way, a love for other people that will make you want to move from being here to here. And you're going to have to come to the point of where you care more about what God knows about you and thinks about you than you do what the world thinks about you. You're going to have to come to a point where it's not about approval of the pastor. It's not about approval of the people in the church. It's about what am I doing to play, uh, gain the approval of God in my conduct, in my mannerism of life. That's the big deal. Let me just tell you about conformity. You can have an unbiblical conformity in a church. And we need to watch that here. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let me tell you what I love about biblical Christianity. Now watch this. <clears throat> Phil and I are in the same church today, worshiping the same God, but we are not dressed alike. Are you listening to me? But tell, but tell me what we do have in common today about our dress. We're both modest. You see, it's not whether you're wearing overalls or a suit. It says, are you following the general principle of Scripture? Yeah. It's not about how fancy your clothes are. Me wearing a suit and tie today does not make me one iota better than this man. It is not about the quality or all that kind of stuff of the clothing, it is about the principle of clothing from the Bible Amen. that God wants matched. That's right. 
So the real question is, is, and what is it? It's just modesty. And it's identity. Male, female, mm -hmm. different types of dress that identifies them. There's just, there's five or six biblical principles on that. This has to do with my body. When I present my body, okay, Lord, how do you want me to dress? Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Where do you want me to go? Yeah. What do I do with my hands? What do I do with my mouth? What do I do with my feet? Yeah. It's not just about dress, but it is part of it. And to be honest with you, if you don't get that part, you've killed the rest that you're doing. Yeah. It's not going to have any effect. <clears throat> it's a battleground. So, if we watch the world's trendsetters, It's not going to be a mystery if we're conformed to that. Can I just be honest with you? I would say that 99.9 .9 of parents of children in public school have no earthly idea how much trendsetting is constantly going on toward their children from the time they get on the bus to the time they get back, much less what they're getting on TV and social media. Disney World knows this. Disney this week just put out a complete deal, a complete line of toys and apparel for transgender children, which there is no such animal. Okay? But they put out, what are they doing? They are desperately, these people are serious out of hell. Now, I mean, they are serious satanic people, and they mean to set the trend in America for children. They want it to take over the culture. And you say, Reggie, what are you doing here at church? I'm fighting them. I'm fighting them with everything in my soul. And you know, the world is going to do what it's going to do. I promise you. And I used to be there. I know how they think. I know what they want. I know what they demand. They demand slavery. Absolute submission to them. Okay? But when you get saved, God expects you to present your body to Christ holy. All right? He expects your mind to be renewed by the word of God. Part of, part of what you come to church about in worship is the renewing of our mind. You hear preaching, you hear teaching, you read the Bible. Why do we have Bible reading between Sunday school and church? Just fill up some time space? No, we know this, that somebody's going to read that and it may have the effect of renewing their mind. And we want to emphasize the importance of the reading of the word of God. In the book of Nehemiah, I believe Danny maybe spoke of this not too long ago. They had a wooden pulpit and they, 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 they read the word of God and gave the sense of it. And people literally stood for the reading of the word of God. And they gave the sense of what were they doing with those people. What happened when Josiah, wasn't it Josiah when they found the word of God in the temple? He rent his clothes and he said, oh my land, we've gotten away from the word of God. And when he read the Bible, he renewed his mind and said, we're not doing what God said to do. And he totally and went back and said, we're going to change the way we live in this nation. Amen. What was that? A renewing of the mind. And, and, and here's what bothers me. We're telling people today, <clears throat> be sure and get saved. Be sure and get saved, Reggie. And don't go to hell, but live like the world all you want to. That's the message most people are getting. You, you get this, ah, just come as you are. Oh, you just come to Jesus like you are. No, you don't. I'm sorry. No, you don't. You come to Jesus with a repentant spirit and heart looking for mercy. Somebody says, he'll change you. I'm going to tell you what will happen. If you really come to Christ for salvation, he'll start changing you before you ever get to him. He start, his spirit starts dealing in your mind. I need to change. Something needs to happen with me. And so this business about, oh, you just come as you are and God doesn't require anything, enough, everything, you can just go on your merry way, but you're saved. It's a false gospel. I'm sorry. Terry. I'm always talking about the men to jail, but there was a guy one night we were giving the gospel and he called me aside and he said, now, if I get saved, do I have to give up this? Do I have to give up this? <laughs> that, you know, he's going down the list. He was trying to check out whether yeah. or not, you know, he was going. Wayne. I said, you know, 
the thing is you're saved by grace, but I said, I don't think you're ready to get saved right now. Yeah. If that's what's on your mind, you come yeah. to Christ and you let him deal with your sin. Yeah. You don't make the call. He does. Yeah. It's the Spirit exactly. that's going to reveal these things to you. Exactly. I mean. Please get this down. Please understand this. We are not saying that the Bible teaches that these, this renewing of your mind and this presenting of your body saves you. It doesn't save you. It is a result of salvation. Yes. He changes the way, he changes your wants and he changes your desires. Yeah. Now here's the deal. You still have a flesh nature and that's not going to be changed. Right. If your flesh nature lusted before you got saved, your flesh nature is still going to lust after you get saved. Right. But your spirit, the spirit and the flesh are contrary one to the other. Yeah. So that you cannot do the things you would. Yeah. But if you be led of the spirit... You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. Now, but we're also talking about a new life, not a new set of rules. Amen. And the new life creates a different heart. Yeah. 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 I, I can't help but go back to marriage. Brother Brett, do you go around all the time saying, doggone, I wish I wasn't married to Mary. Just think of all the women I could chase. No. Not if you love her, you don't. But you know what I know about you? You got the same flesh nature I got. And your flesh might look around here a little bit once in a while. And you have to buck that with the Holy Spirit of God and say, God, get a hold of me. Now, let's just be, I mean, I'm being honest with you, okay? Let's don't play, I ain't here to play church with you. I ain't play here to play hypocrite with you. I'm being real with you. You're going to have a fight. But you've got to understand that this presenting of your body and the renewal of your mind is not saving you. It is a result of having been saved. Used to, you would do that and have no qualms about it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And now, it's like instantly you're just like. The Holy Spirit goes, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Right. yeah. You know? Hey, stupid. I mean, what he does, that's kind of, I mean, I don't hear no vo vo verbal voice, but it's kind of like, hey, stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, stupid. Yeah. I mean, really. That's just almost the spirit that comes to me. The Holy Spirit goes, hey, hey, dumbo. Hang on, I got one over here. Yes. When I was 17, I quit school, and I thought I had to prove to the world that I could make it financially successful. Ah. And I became of the world, and then when I was 23, I got a good paying job, and lived in the world, and run around with guys who were worldly women chasers, and I wanted to be like them. And I kind of idolized it. I wish I, wished I could be popular. I wish I could be worldly. And God finally knocked me down to nothing and got saved, okay. and all of that didn't matter one bit. Yeah. Hey, hey. I, I would say this to you, and I, I know experience is not what to go off of, but when you check in the Bible, when God saved people, they were changed. Amen. They were changed. Amen. There was a change. And it's not you changing yourself, it's the work of the Holy Spirit in you changing you. And I believe that you'll almost be shocked sometimes that, man, I didn't used to think like this. I used to really like listening to the Eagles. I used to, you know, go ahead. You spend a lot of time chasing that nonsense, whether, you know, is going to the bars or whether it was, it was like what he was talking about. And the fact is, is it's just the fact is that when you get it, and God help you if you do. But when you do, it's not what it was. What you no. had it all built up to be in your mind. It, it, it's a drunken mess. Gene, go ahead. Yeah, when well you uh, temptation is not no, especially certain kinds is very strong, and re, and it's uh, and it keeps coming. It keeps fighting you. But you got to remember, if you're a Christian, God says. He'll make a way of escape that you That's may right. be able to bear. Right. He won't just leave you hanging there. If you get to hating it, he'll make you a way to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not here preaching a man up way of, you know, it's all work of the Holy Spirit, work of the Word of God. We're not trying to say we're better than anybody. We're just saying the Bible teaches a different way. And it's being transformed instead of being conformed to the world. And it's a way of life and it's a way of liberty and it's a way of joy. And, it's, and, it's, and by the way, if you don't have any of that in the sense of practicality, there's eternal life at the end. 
I mean, if it's all, you know, but here, here's, what, here's what really hurts my heart. And I want every young person in here to get hold of this. And I want young married people to get hold of this. Whether you believe this or not, I do understand the battle that you're going through. And I understand, boys, that you want to, you know, you, you want to be looked at positively by the girls. I mean, is there a guy in this church house? I mean, I don't know. I can't hardly believe that guy didn't want to look good to her. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Did you pick your nose the first time you and her was visiting? I wouldn't surprise me if I did. You wouldn't surprise you? <laughs> Most guys that's trying to impress the girls are not going to go around with their finger after their nose and say, hey, sweetie pie. <laughs> what would you do if the boys <laughs> We put on our best front. We want to impress them. And if we think that this here is the way that it's going to happen, that's what we do. I didn't wear bell bottoms and stupid, what do you call it, platforms because they were comfortable. You ever tried to haul hay in bell bottoms and platforms? And it's the same thing with the girls. Girls, I'm going to, add, I'm going to beg you in Jesus' name, be a free woman. Be a free woman. Don't you let any boy in this church house make you conform to their way of living if they're worldly. And don't you let them, you be, you be free in Christ. Don't you let them tell you how you're going to dress. Because I'm going to tell you something. You ain't never going to satisfy them. You're never going to gain their approval. They're going to make you think they are and they're going to keep backing up and they're going to make the goalposts farther all the time until you're a stinking queer. And then it won't even be enough. Somebody, I, yeah, I got you him and I got you. Go ahead. Well, uh, for young people, read uh, Ecclesiastes. Solomon said it best. He tried it, he did it, and this is what an old man told me a long time ago and it helped me in my walk. He said, with the trendsetter things, because that's what I wanted more than anything. That's right. If it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. You know, it's new under the sun. Somebody's already did it. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, if you kids want to really get a good dose of what life's real about and understand that things, things are generationally don't really change, go back in the 1940 about World War II time and see what all the girls were doing, see what all the guys were doing. Everybody was doing the same thing. Go back to the 1920s. They were still doing it. Everybody was trying to fit and conform to what they thought the world wanted to do. There was two sets. They were either conforming to the world or conforming to Christ. This is nothing new. Your generation's nothing new. And here's what, I, here's what I'm begging in this church house is that our young people, that our parents would not be one of approved and accepted by the world, but will want the approval of Jesus Christ. And they would just simply say, you know, if this is what, if this is the, it doesn't have to be spelled out in black and white, every little issue to me. But if this is the general tone of scripture, this is what I want to do. Uh, Phil. When I was 16, our family started going to a church where I was growing up and was that was preaching the gospel, that was biblically, and I was under conviction bad. And I had been, I was, I was doing everything to conform to the world at that point in my life. Long hair, running around run, run, with the roughs to the rough kids that, that I knew in my area. But, but I started falling under conviction. I knew that something in my life needed to change. I knew that where I was going was taking me to hell. I got that much out of out of the preaching that I was sitting under. What I did not understand was what, what the salvation was, what the gospel yeah. was. I did not understand. So in my mind, I thought I had to be better. So I started... Hey, everybody, hearing. please get a hold of this. Get a hold of this right here. This is critical. So I went through a period of time where I had kept trying to do better, but I knew in my own mind it wasn't getting it done. I wasn't doing better. Just when I thought I was doing good, I would nose dive fast, yeah. you know. And so over and over again, I kept, I, and I knew. And so it, it wasn't, I was, it wasn't doing better, wasn't making me feel better. Yeah. I was, it was seemed like it was getting worse and worse until the night that we was, we had a, there was a revival going on and I heard a, heard a man preaching and I don't remember nothing about the message except for what you're doing is not going to save you. Exactly. You cannot do anything to save yourself. Christ already done it. And you know, and, and for the first time in my life, it wasn't the first time I probably heard the gospel, but for the first time the gospel got got in. The whole spirit is illuminating your mind. It, it, I, let me just say two or three things. We're going to wrap wrap it up. We've got one minute left. This is Bible. This is the summation of what Paul said, therefore, 
because you've been saved, because of what Christ did for you, because of who you are in Christ, therefore, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewal of your mind. Now, let me tell you, I, I want to give you, I, I, it, God don't write no new Bible through nobody, especially me. But I can prophesy what's going to happen to any person in this congregation or listening to me who rejects this. I can prophesy. Are you listening to me? I can prophesy <laughs> that you will get bitter toward God and bitter toward church and that you will carve out a rationalization for you to hate church. If you're saved and you, and you resist this, you will begin. Now, here's why I'm getting back to him, what he said. He was in church, and he's hearing all this, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, but he really didn't understand the gospel. That can happen in this church. Yeah. Somehow or another, you have not been illuminated to understand that salvation is a new birth based upon what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross in his death and resurrection. And somehow or another, you think in your mind that if I dress right, act right, don't do this and don't do this and don't do this, I'll be saved. That's wrong. And we do not preach that here, but I'm telling you, the devil can come in and he can work that in to make you think that's what we preach here. And so what happens is you are in the middle of this thing. Watch this. You're in the middle of this thing. And your mind from week to week goes back and forth. Now watch this. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. And what will happen is that if you don't yield to Christ, present, and you're, and, and, but the, the raw reality of it, probably not saved, but you come over here and you just make up your mind, I'm going to do what, watch this, I'm going to do what I want to do. But you're not. You're doing what the devil and the world's telling you to do. And you will, watch this, be under bondage, condemnation, no peace. And then if you're not careful, you will have a bad attitude toward Christianity. And you, there you go. You get buddied up with some friend. And they'll say, man, you don't hear this band we got at church. <clears throat> Can I just give you a little bit of light? You walk into a church house, and they've got the light shut off except on the stage. Run. Let's stand. We're done for this part. <laughs> I don't know what we'll do next week. We may rehearse this just a little bit, but we're going to keep trucking through Romans chapter 12. Get into spiritual gifts a little bit there and so forth. But I'm glad everybody's here. Just want to encourage you in the Lord. Hey, man, I tell you what, I like tough stuff. Amen. amen. We need, I'll tell you that Bible's truth. Amen. That'll truth will help you. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, I love the Lord. I hope you do today. I want to tell you one thing. We ain't here to play games as nobody's mind. We don't play mind games this church. You're either saved, you're lost. You either know Christ, or you don't. If you don't, I'm going to encourage you to get saved. Know the Lord. And you can be. It's free. Amen. Brother John, you're awful handy. Would you dismiss us? And then everybody, everybody loves Jesus. Get a songbook and come up and sing. <laughs> That'll get them up here. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to openly yes. praise you and worship you yes. and glorify you. We pray that you would be glorified in this service, okay? that you would be honored. In all of our hearts, yes. all of the time, we pray that you would change us to be like Jesus, yes. and not of this world, but separate. We pray that you'd help us to do your will, help us, help us to see your word, and to divide it, and to live by yes. it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Yeah, Come on up and let's sing this morning.